Hello everyone and welcome to my much anticipated for both me and you gecko bookshelf tutorial. Now I have uploaded two of these in the past and every time I do about like a year later I build another version so this would be version three. I have realized over time different changes that need to be made so I private those videos because I no longer feel that I can endorse them without having made those safety changes or what have you. So those videos are now private but this one is now available to you and will be until I find something wrong with it. I'm sure I will eventually because that's just who I am. But this is the safest, best model that I have come up with yet in my three years of making gecko bookshelves. I'm not going to preface this much, I'm going to get right to it, but I'm going to ask you a couple things before you get started. One, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. Two, please give this video a like if you like it. And three, if you find this video helpful or you use this build, please let me know. Share it with me on social media, whether it be Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. I love to see your guys' creations. People have made such amazing gecko bookshelves. And also, if you are interested in supporting this channel in a way that is other than just watching the videos and contributing ad sets, which of course I greatly appreciate, but if you are interested in becoming a patron or buying merch or making a donation, those are all linked below as well as social media. Now. Let's go ahead and get started. This is going to be a long video, so get a snack, get a notepad, and let's get started. So here is a list of the things you'll need. I want to uh, dive into it a little bit because some of the things are going to change depending on what you decide to build. So obviously you're going to need a bookshelf and it's completely up to you what size bookshelf you use, how many shelves it has, what it's made out of, and so on. When it comes to heating your bookshelf, you can use an under tank heater which has adhesive and will stick to the shelf or you can use heat tape. If you use heat tape, you're going to need to get a couple other things including the wiring set which you can often find on the website with the heat tape and you also need to get aluminum foil tape. When it comes to the thermostat, you're going to need to get one thermostat for each heat source you have. So if you're using heat tape, however long that you decide to wire it, you can use one thermostat. So I'm using one thermostat per bookshelf. But if you're going to be using each individual heater for each shelf, you'll need to get a thermostat for each shelf. When it comes to the bumpers, you're going to need six per shelf because you're going to need to put four on the bottom and two up top. So make sure you have enough for your build before you go ahead and get started. You're also going to need to have small metal hooks and you'll need to have at least two per shelf. So make sure you have enough of those before you get started. And lastly, you'll need to use command hooks for your acrylic doors. You will need at least one hook per door, but depending on your preference, you may actually use two per door. The other items on this list, like tape and the drill and drill bit and tools, are going to be essential for your build, but they're going to be different depending on what your bookshelf actually requires, and also make sure you have like common tools on hand for building a bookshelf. With all that said, let's go ahead and get started on the build, shall we? Alright everyone, I apologize if the lighting is bad. I tried to make it as good as possible with this light and that light, but we'll see how it goes. I actually tried filming this with my other bookshelves, which are over there. They're completed, but the lighting was really, really bad, so I wanted to give it another go with this one. So the first thing you're going to absolutely need to do is obviously construct your own bookshelf. I will include the link to this bookshelf in the links below, but you can also use your own and whatever kind you want. It's completely up to you. That's the great thing about the Gecko bookshelf is you get to choose it. So what you're going to do is assemble it. So as you can see, I've assembled it. One thing I'd like to note is that if you are using heat tape like I am, try and leave the screws on the outside a little bit pulled out so that there's enough room to squeeze the heat tape in between. Okay. And then in addition to that, you're going to want to make some other modifications to the bookshelf that will make it safer and um, better for housing an animal. So the first one I want to recommend, as you can see, there's a tiny little hole right here. Take a tack, whoa, 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 oh, there it is. Take it, I just dropped it again, oh my god. Take a tack, like this one, hold it in your fingers like this, and then hold the back of the shelf, and poke through the cardboard backing, if your bookshelf has that. This will help you line up the back of this with the back of this. As you can see, there's one hole, there's another hole, I still haven't, oh, of course, yes, I did post a third one through, I didn't know if I did that or not. So there's one, two, three, and so what you're going to do with those is you're going to take little tiny nails and put them through. So let me go show you the nails, and no, oh, they're in my pocket, okay, cool. So 
here's a nail it comes with the bookshelf but you can use any other small little like you know insignificant nail a long one is better than a short one because it's really hard to hold a short one while you're nailing it into the back and it hit my finger that way so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll show you guys what it looks like when I'm done now this next part is entirely up to your own discretion but as you can see I can't push my fingers in between this shelf and it's not going anywhere. My only concern is there's a little divot right here that I can put my finger in, so I'm going to put another nail here. But aside from that, the three are in. We have one here, we have one here, and we have one here. And those three do the trick. Now, like I said, I'm going to put another one here, and I usually do put five. I put, you know, one, two, three, four, five, and that really holds it in place. But I've also noticed that three does the job fine, so it's up to your personal choice. You're going to want to repeat this step for every shelf. So I'm going to use this shelf as an example. See how it comes out and you can easily push. You don't want your gecko to be able to do that. So make sure that you do this for every single shelf. Now I even include this middle shelf, even though it's screwed into the side, I don't want the back to be able to be pushed out. So I'm also going to put nails in that one. And here's the bottom and you can see I can push it out here. That means I'm also going to put nails in the bottom shelf. So these are clear plastic or rubber bumpers. I'm not really sure what they're made out of, um, but this is the box. I got them from Walmart. This is what they look like. They come in like a little sheet like this. Oh my God, there's a dog hair stuck on that. <laughs> Anyways, they come in a little uh, sheet like this and I wouldn't go any shorter than these. Like, so if you can get higher bumpers than this, great, but don't go any shorter than these. So these bumpers are to hold in the acrylic doors. So you're gonna have one placed here and one placed here. And then I'm also gonna put one on this side. One more thing about the bumpers is you have to put one up here and one up here. I'll show you that when I'm done. But the reason you have to do that is so that the acrylic door can't slide in on itself. You're gonna wanna set the bumper a little bit further back. So you're not gonna wanna put one up here just in the very front because your door would have to go behind it. So you're gonna to wanna to set it back here and I'll show you that in a minute. Here's an example of the bumper that I referenced in the last clip. As you can see, it is a bumper just like down here, but it's on the side. You can also put it on the top if you want. I just put it on the side cause it's easier. So the side, the side, and it will catch the door so it can't fall inwards. That's the purpose of the, of the bumper anyway. And I forgot to mention, for extra precaution, you can super glue these down, especially if yours aren't very sticky, whatever kind that you buy. If they like wiggle around a little bit, then you can definitely super glue them down. Just make sure you don't put an animal in the enclosure for like 24 hours or however long you feel that it will take for the super glue smell to go away and for the super glue to cure. Obviously, it is super glue, so it dries really fast, but it does have a smell, so just be aware of that. Something else you're going to need to do is get a small drill bit and a drill and then for every single shelf you're going to about halfway up so where the middle is between each shelf which is like right about there on the inside of the shelf you're going to drill a little hole you're going to do that on both sides and that's so that you can put a tiny little um, hook in it I'll show you the hook in a minute once I drill the hole and that will catch the door if the gecko pushes on it now most of the doors if you get them cut to size properly will actually just stay inset and like won't be able to be pushed out but some doors if they're not cut to size properly will be able to be pushed out a little bit and so the best way to make sure that your door doesn't just fall out of the enclosure is the bumpers and the hook combination so here you can see the hook installed and then you just can turn it this way to make it tighter and you always want to face it in so it catches the door some hooks you can put on the outside here and then they'll bend out this way and catch the door i have that method on liana's house for example and it works great but this is safer for larger doors so if you have a bookshelf that's 24 inches or smaller which is what miss liana's is then you can for sure use that method but for the larger ones i like to do this because it really makes sure the doors can't go anywhere and also um, i have a few escape artists so it's better to be safe than sorry so as you can see i have heat tape here i am personally using heat tape for this design and the reason i am is because i have a number of bookshelves already and if I use an individual heater for each shelf, I will have to use an individual thermostat for each shelf, which is like an absolute nightmare. So I'm going to use heat tape and then each bookshelf will have its own thermostat. 
but it will not be one thermostat per shelf. If you just have one bookshelf, you can totally just use adhesive heaters. You can just place it right on the top, cut a little part of the cardboard backing out so that you can put the cord out and also put the thermostat in and then that you're good to go, you're fine. But if you wanna use heat tape, I will show you how I'm doing it. This is my first experience with heat tape, so please do a lot of research about heat tape aside from just watching this, okay? I've been playing this for months, so I've done a lot of learning about heat tape and I'm still learning as I go. So basically, I took the heat tape, which is, this is four inch heat tape. It heats between the bars right here. It doesn't heat out here, it heats right here. And I chose four inch heat tape because this is 12. Um, inches when you're supposed to have like one third of the enclosure heated so there's like a good chunk up here that's not heated a part back here that's not heated and then I have the heat tape running kind of down the middle the reason I can't put it all the way back is because of the screws so I'll show you on this shelf how far back it can go so right here it's a little tight I need to loosen the screws again in order to um, have it move back a little bit more but it'll be about here so there's a significant amount of space in the front and in the back that could fit a whole leopard gecko here and plenty of space for them to get off the heater and because they have heat along the entirety of this I'll be keeping it a little bit cooler than I normally would. I would normally keep around 90. I'm going to keep it around 88, 89 instead and that's also because with a bookshelf this size and with heat tape in general there will be some temperature differences between each shelf and like the heat tape up here may be a little bit warmer or a little bit cooler than the heat tape at the bottom which I've already started taping down. I'll get to that but yeah if you have it around 88, 89 then it can't get too hot because it'll probably be just a couple degree of difference. I'll show you more when it's all hooked up electrically and plugged in and whatnot but this is the beginning stage so there's two ways you can do it. If you don't have a backing to your bookshelf which then I don't know how you're going to keep your gecko in but there are rack systems that don't have backings and they run the heat tape out the back and then down in here. But since I have a back, I have to run it in between the shelves. So as you can see, I have weaved it down. Yep, all the way. And it comes out the bottom through there. I left about this much out of the bottom and that's the part that we're going to hook up. So I'll turn this bookshelf at an angle or on its side and then Aaron and I are going to wire it. Now we haven't wired one yet, so it's gonna be fun. But I just thought I would let you guys know that that's the process you have to do in order to get it to work. I am currently using THG heat tape and I will include a link below to the exact kind that I got so you guys can go to the exact same place I got it and make sure that if you want to use heat tape, this is the kind that I'm using. So in order to tape down heat tape, I'm using aluminum tape. It's this right here. It's literally like aluminum foil with adhesive. This is like a paper backing that you have to peel off. And it's not that hard to peel off, although all the reviews said it was going to be. So I was like looking to having this really difficult time, but it actually wasn't that bad. But as you can see, there it is taped down. It's a little hard to work with, <laughs> so it got a little bit of crinklies, but it's really not that bad. And you only want to put it on the outside of the lines. So don't cross the little like copper colored bar here. Just stay right along the edge. And then that holds it down in place really, really well. And you're going to want to make sure that you tape it on the bottom and also on the sides. Now, I need to put in a piece of tape here, but I wanted to stop and film. But yeah, and also this will be covered. I'm going to cover this and I'm going to cover that so they will not be able to access this aluminum tape or this heat tape directly. Don't be concerned there. Um, the same goes for your heater if you use just like an adhesive heat pad you're gonna have something over top of this when you decorate it and so your geckos will not be able to get to it. I'll get to that, so don't worry, it's a process. I also want to add that this is the top side of heat tape, that's the bottom side of heat tape, this is the bottom side, that's the top side. Okay, it actually works both ways, it doesn't matter what way you have it. This will still be just as hot as the top side, so there's no concern there either. Once the heat tape is on, you can go ahead and tighten the screws down here. There's one down here on my bookshelf anyway, and there's one up here. There might not be those on your bookshelf, but if there are, you can definitely go ahead and tighten them. So something else that you're going to want to do with the heat tape is anytime you have an end that you're not going to, you know, hook into the wall, basically that part's all the way down there, like I said, but this part, um, you're going to want to cover these bars with electrical tape on both sides so it's 
it's wrapped around. There you go. So I need to do that to both sides and I have to do that for all three bookshelves. So here is the bottom of the bookshelf, one of the three. And as you can see, I left a bit of heat tape at the bottom. This is a little bit more than I left on the other ones, but it's fine. I just applied the wire connectors and all that nonsense. I'm obviously not going to show you how to do that on video because it's my first time ever doing it and I'm literally learning as I go. Like the last clip I filmed with the other bookshelf, I didn't cut the insulator pad so now I don't have enough so I have to order another, another one. <laughs> so um, anyways, so yes, these are cut now and they're good to go but whatever. Um, I will include in the links below. A link to exactly how to use this THG heat tape and how to wire it and all the little precautions you have to take and yada yada. I've watched the video four times. It's extremely informative so I'll keep that in the links below and you guys can watch that to learn how to use heat tape if you're going to use heat tape. Next what I'm going to do is just take some of the aluminum tape that you saw on the front of the bookshelves where the heat tape is and I'm just going to tape it to the bottom just so it's not dangling on the carpet. And there it is, taped down so that it will stay in place and not like drape on the carpet when I set the bookshelf upright. So this is a thermostat. I got it off of Amazon. It has a probe right ah, here where that little suction cup bit is. And the probe is what you put on the heater and it will determine what the temperature of the heater is. And then the actual thermostat itself, which you plug your heater into right there, will control the temperature that comes out of the heat tape. So this is absolutely essential to use with a heater or heat tape, any heat element, especially if there's animals involved. And so I have one of these per bookshelf. What I'm gonna do is cut a tiny little hole right around there, and then I'm gonna poke the thermostat probe through, place it right on top, put this down, and then later on these are gonna be adhered down, but I of course wanted to make sure I could still move it around to put the, the probe underneath. So I'm gonna do that, and I'll show you guys what it looks like. Okay, so I used an X-Acto knife, this one right here actually, and I cut a tiny little hole. Let's see if I can zoom in on that a tiny little hole and allowed the cord for the probe to come through. I taped it down with electrical tape and then there it is sitting on top of the heater. And then in order to make the back safe, I taped over the hole. Ta-da! So here's a thermostat up here. The heat tape is plugged into it and it's um, taped right here just to make sure that it doesn't like, you know, fall down or wiggle around. I'm going to keep all the thermostats in sight so they'll all be sitting on top of the bookshelves, probably like behind some piece of art or something so they're not just like blatantly out there and kind of like awkward and ugly or whatever, but I like to be able to see them because you have to be able to read the temperatures and whatnot and make sure everything's going well, so they have to be able to be seen. You can put them on the side of the bookshelf, like you can some of them have like little hooks yeah this one has one so you could like nail it to a wall you could nail it to the bookshelf but since mine are like bookshelf to bookshelf to bookshelf i could only do that for the two outer ones and not the middle so i'm just going to keep them all on top so it's easy to see them i also taped down the probe cord just to keep everything you know i guess as organized or as in its place as possible so the next thing I do is I cut kitchen cabinet liner. Now, this is kitchen cabinet liner right here. It's a roll of it. I got it off of Amazon. I think this is like granite or something. I don't know. I just like that it isn't white like my current ones. So I have to cut it this way and then I also have to cut a bit off the front so that it sits behind the bumpers like this. This is a, a perfect example here. And I'm going to do that for each of the shelves. So in order to adhere these to the shelf, which is really just an extra precaution because like they don't really lift up and get underneath them well, but this is an extra precaution that I will be taking. So if you want to take it, I'll show you how. So I have a lot of extra command hooks because of how many times I've made gecko bookshelves, whether it be using the hooks on the inside to hang plants and hammocks or whether it be on the outside to hang the little hooks on the doors, which I'll actually get to later. The doors are being made this weekend. I'm gonna use these little leftover ones because they do come with more than necessary in a pack. So I've just like saved up a bunch of them. While I may be using these, you can use double-sided tape. You can use little tiny nails. You can like nail it in. And if you're concerned about like, oh, what if I wanted to take it out and change it? It really shouldn't be difficult. I mean, the nails I think would be more difficult than anything, but these would be really easy to, to get off. There's a dog hair, oh my gosh, dog hair everywhere. To clean these, I just use a warm wash rag and wipe them down in their place. Because if I take them out and put them on the carpet and wet them, little hairs get stuck to them. It's just, it's a hassle. So I just leave them in their place and wipe them down. So if you are concerned about that at all, 
um, in terms of having them adhered down, don't worry. That's It's very easy to clean them with them being in place. So, like I said, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And the reason I'm doing that is because I don't want them to be able to access the heat tape underneath, just for precautionary measures. Oh, and another thing, people always ask me, Jessica, isn't it bad to put this like rubber plastic on top of the heat? Well, considering the heat is controlled with a thermostat and will not be getting hotter than 90 degrees or even a little bit lower, like 88, no, this is only a problem if you're applying extreme heat to it. You could lay this on top of a heat pad that gets to well above 100 and it still wouldn't melt. So it's not going to be a concern unless you're like applying direct flame to it or extreme heat. Same thing with the bookshelf. People always ask me, isn't it bad to put heat on wood? Plenty of people put heat on wood in their rack systems. So this is not a bad thing to do as long as, again, you are controlling your heater with a thermostat. You have properly put everything together. You have made sure that you use the um, insulation pads on your heat tape. And at the end here, you proper in properly insulate those little bands. As long as you're following all the rules, everything is completely safe. And again, this is wood and it's not going to get above 90 degrees unless you're applying like direct flame or extreme heat or some sort of like i don't know uh electrical hazard to the wood then it won't be a problem so there's the little command hook adhesive i'm gonna peel this bit off and then i'm gonna press it down in place right here and hopefully that will be just enough on all of the corners so that a gecko cannot get underneath here. Don't forget, with decor and things on top of it, it will hold it in place well. So keep that in mind. So I also used um, the adhesives from the command hook pack or whatever and some kitchen cabinet liner that matches what I have going on on the bottom to cover the heat tape on the sides just to make it safe so that they can't like scratch on it or pull the tape off or whatever so not only will that be there but i'm also going to try and hide some of those panels with some plants just make it a little bit um easier safer take a lot of precautions yada yada that sort of thing i don't actually anticipate it'll be a problem but like i said the panels are there for safety Okay, so these are what the acrylic doors will look like. I bought a bunch of acrylic from Lowe's and obviously I had them cut the acrylic there because their skill is much better than mine. If you go to Lowe's and you have your measurements on hand, pick a piece that's big enough to fit all your measurements or if it takes a couple pieces, then pick a couple pieces. Have them cut it for you. And if you're lucky, you won't have to sand it to make it fit. I only had to sand two doors, count them, two doors this time, which is miraculous. I've usually in the past had to have them sand many more uh, doors, but I was able to get most of all three of the bookshelves without um, sanding, so thankful. But the two doors that I had to sand, that's one of them right there. It doesn't have uh, door handles yet. We're like very minimal in terms of needing sanding, so that was great. So once you have your doors cut to the proper size, like that's an example right there, or this door itself is a finished example, what you'll do is you'll get a command hook, any size you want, any preference you have. So I have big ones and I also have some smaller ones and you can do any amount that you want. If you want to put three, three. If you want to put one, one, that's fine. Make sure you adhere it to your door and then you're good to go. There's your door. And also make sure your hooks are in place so that they can capture the door. See, it's not going anywhere. No geckos are escaping. Perfect. What you crying about? Ta-da! This is what they look like all done and put together. How beautiful. I'm so proud. I'm so happy with them. That's it everyone. That's the new Gecko Bookshelf. Thank you so much for watching. I was actually going to upload this in a series of three, but unfortunately I was laid off from work and I cannot uh, decorate the enclosures the way I wanted to. So this is the only video you're going to get for the moment, but in the future I would like to have a complete tour of my Gecko Bookshelves and I would also like to upload a cost factor analysis about the Gecko Bookshelves, but both those videos will have to come at a later time because I was just laid off and your girl cannot afford to blow like $200 on plants and cork bark and all kinds of stuff. So they're completely fine for the time being in terms of decor, but I just would like to add more, but I can't right now. So again, thank you so much for watching. Please hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, leave a comment, leave a like. If you want to support us on other platforms, there's Patreon, a donation link, and merchandise links down below. And I also have social media down below if you're interested in Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. Thank you so much. That's everything, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!